All right, throwing down TIG welding passes that are as clean as these here. This is an absolute treat to flip up your welding hood and look at after you finish. However, there are a few really important small things that are gonna help you get stuff like this. And I see a lot of people skip these steps. All right, let's get into it here. All right, the first thing we need to talk about is probably the most important setting on your TIG welding machine. And this setting is post flow. Now, this is something that I definitely talk about pretty often on my channel here, but even still, a ton of people do not have this set correctly. Directly. So when you finish a weld, our torch has an extremely important job that it still has to do. Not off the hook yet, little buddy. So whether you are TIG welding aluminum or stainless steel, the post flow cycle is absolutely the most important thing to helping you get clean results. So for example, when we are TIG welding stainless steel, we need to make sure that we cover the welding area adequately for at least a couple seconds after our workpiece has finished glowing red hot. When your stainless steel TIG welding passes are glowing red hot, this is a state where they are susceptible to forming severe oxide immediately. If it is exposed to our atmosphere, the air that we breathe, it gets oxidized immediately. There's no way around it. Ensure that you have the timer on your machine set for at least a couple seconds extra from what you actually need. Maintain a proper standoff distance or arc length or whatever, and ensure that your torch does not move until you have finished your post flow cycle. Anytime you see excessive heat affected zone or especially any oxide forming at all, you have to set this timer for a longer duration or increase your gas level through your regulator. Take some time to do some practice runs. When you're just trying to ballpark where to set your timer with stainless steel, I usually have it set anywhere from six to eight seconds. Usually around six seconds is good for aluminum. Always have it set for a little bit longer than you think you need. Better to be safe than sorry. Also make sure to keep your filler material Material in the gas envelope as well. We don't want any oxide forming on that little puppy either. Now, if we are TIG welding aluminum, this setting is equally as important. However, even though we do not need to post flow the welding area itself, it is extremely important that we post flow and shield the tungsten. If our glowing red hot tungsten has its gas supply cut short, severe oxide forms immediately gross. Look at that. When you have a contaminated tungsten like this, you go to start your next pass, Boom! All of this oxide is blown into your welding area immediately, and you have now introduced severe contamination into your next pass. Once again, your timer on the machine has to be set for a long enough duration to properly shield this electrode. Like I said, an extra second or two after your tungsten is finished glowing red hot. When done properly, we should always see this tungsten looking shiny. Sometimes you may see a little bit of color to it, that's all right. That is a light form of oxide that is formed. However, when it's a little bit of color, it's not a huge deal, we can deal with that. But ideally, we want things to be super shiny like this here. Now, essentially the rule of thumb that I teach the students working in my online TIG welding program, the main thing that we have to worry about is that the tungsten surface just remains reflective. If the appearance is like a dark color or dark gray or something like that, anytime the finish is essentially dull and has lost the reflective quality like you're looking at here, this is when severe oxide has formed on your tungsten. This tungsten here needs to be cleaned and reshaped. Also with aluminum, make sure to leave your torch completely stable while the post flow cycle is running. If you can remember, do not pull it away from the welding area. When you do so, this causes the gas to become insufficient as you pull it away. And this poor little fella here is gonna be contaminated by the air that we breathe. So like I said, whether working with stainless steel or aluminum TIG welding, make sure that this post flow cycle is set for a long enough duration on your machine. Keep everything in nice and tight and stationary after you finish welding and just wait patiently until that post flow cycle has finished running. The next most important thing we're gonna have a look at here is your torch. This one's super important. A lot of people forget this one. Sometimes the students in my program are having problems with some strange results with cleanliness. After I ask them to send a specific picture of their welding setup on their torch, sometimes we see a cup or a gas screen that looks like this, yuck. Check out all the splatter, gross. What this stuff is doing is it's obstructing gas from coming out of your torch properly. So even if you're using a diffuser or a gas lens setup, doesn't matter. Having a cup like this is gonna cause gas turbulence. You need to clean all of this stuff out immediately. It gives you a smoother gas flow and it it also helps your arc remain a little more stable, especially at low amperage. Now again, I talk about this all the time on my channel, but this still remains to be something that gives people a lot of problems. All you need to do, just use a tool like this, doesn't matter. Using it, you can then scrape out the inside of the cup, get rid of all that splatter and gross stuff. If you don't have something like that, use an old piece of tungsten, whatever. Just get rid of all that crazy crap on the inside of that cup. When you're done with that, use a wire brush next. This is gonna help to scrape out the inside so that is nice and smooth in there. Any contamination from smoke inside the cup is 
now removed. You can then take the cup, press the tip of it on a piece of scotch bright or something like this, give it a couple spins, and this thing should definitely be much cleaner. Now you can also use your wire brush on your gas lens screen. Very carefully, pressing gently, you can push this against your gas screen. A couple little spins like this, it's gonna remove a lot of that contamination and spatter for you. Getting clean stuff is extremely important with TIG welding. Having these incredible inverter type machines in my shop here is a total blast to work with, but sometimes these things can have too many options to play with. In this episode here, I go over the most important settings that you need to worry about. We can forget about all the other confusing options that your machine might have. This episode goes over the three most important things that you need to make sure you've set correctly. Go check that episode out next. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty, Phil and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.